Today we had an event that only happens approximately once per decade, a new system reveal from Sony. While Sony had previously revealed specifications of the PlayStation 5 along with the controller, we had not seen any games and certainly had not seen the system itself. I'm going to give my thoughts on the game lineup that they showed along with the design of the hardware and then some things that were conspicuously absent. First, it was clear that Sony wanted to do their best to make this feel like an event. Due to the virus situation, there is no way they could reveal their new games and console to a live audience, so the event that they created, filled with what had to be about 5-10 to 10 minutes of filler footage, made sure that the entire showcase lasted an hour. You could tell that there must have been much, much more interview footage that was cut to eliminate too many people talking about games, rather than just showing them. It was clear to me, at least, that Sony had more to say, but they wanted to make sure that they did not become the Xbox One reveal, with more talking than actual games. All things considered, we got to see plenty of new games. The main issue I have with the game shown is that most of them are 2021 or later. If Sony is trying to get people excited to buy their new console a mere 4 or 5 months from now, they definitely need a lot more games for the launch lineup, and as far as I could tell, none of the admittedly very few games showing a 2020 release date said that they were launch titles. Of the games shown, a few stood out to me, a bit more than the others. Beyond the first big reveal, and I am not counting another re-release of Grand Theft Auto V, seeing Gran Turismo 7 was pretty exciting. I didn't play Sport, and I did enjoy 6 nearly a decade ago when it came out. I still can't believe that they never ported 6 to the PS4, but I digress. It is great to see that 7 is going to come to the PS5, because no one does sim racing better. Beyond that, I found Stray to be quite compelling. Evidently a dystopian world without humans and you appear to be a cat living among robots. The world looks really interesting, rich with atmosphere. On the PlayStation blog, the developers had this to say. On creating a virtual cat, they said, Our goal is to create a unique experience playing as a cat. We are inspired every day by our cats. Most of the team are cat owners as well, giving us a lot of helpful first-hand references. Cats are always so playful, cute, and lovingly annoying that it's an endless stream of gameplay ideas for us. It is also a very unique point of view for an adventure game. Exploring the strange world we are building feels really fresh when you're sneaking under a car or walking the rooftops with the inhabitants below, unaware of your presence. Or if you want them to be aware, you can just meow endlessly to annoy them. Beyond that, they say that there is significant exploration and puzzle solving. Sounds like a good time to me. Demon's Souls getting remade is long overdue, and it will be a huge hit, much bigger than it was when it was originally released. It looks really, really good, and I am excited to play it. Hopefully it's not a holiday 2021 or later game, since it didn't even show a release window at all. It is hard to get that excited about a game I've already played and beaten many years ago, but it does look amazing and will definitely be a day one purchase. It just isn't enough to buy a PS5 alone. Horizon Forbidden West looks really, really good. I am far more excited about this iteration of the franchise than the first one if the trailer is anything to go by. The game seems to be more focused on exploration, and there is a scene with mountain climbing, so I am hoping that this is a hint that Aloy can climb anywhere a la Breath of the Wild, which would be really, really awesome. It would really open up the exploration, which would be fantastic. The stream did not do this game justice, I recommend checking out the actual trailer on YouTube because it looks phenomenal. Unfortunately, like most of the other games shown, a release date is nowhere near imminent. This is likely a holiday 2021 title at the earliest, if not sometime in 2022 I'd guess. Without any kind of window being announced at all, it is likely a long time away. Kina Bridge of Spirits was also a game that looked interesting to me. When I watched it, it gave me some strong Zelda vibes. Well, turns out there's a great reason for that. The team Ember Lab is a small indie studio, but prior to developing Kina, they made the fam short film movie Majora's Mask Terrible Fate that was basically a Skull Kid origin story. That film has in excess of 20 million views, so you've probably heard of it. It is a story-driven game about exploration, with puzzle-solving elements and fluid combat as you can see in the trailer. For those that don't want to get a PS5 just for this game, it is also coming to PS4 and PC. There were other interesting reveals, such as the two Bethesda games, but I really need to see more from both of those before I get excited. 
Both seem to be totally different games than what their initial reveal trailers showed last year, so I'm still thinking a bit about those. No RPGs being shown beyond possibly what you'd consider action RPGs like Kino or Horizon was pretty disappointing. There were heavy rumors of a Final Fantasy XVI reveal, but as that game is probably a 2023 release at this point, it probably is a good thing that it wasn't shown. Square has a terrible habit of showing games that are the better part of a decade away from release. So my biggest criticism is that there weren't enough launch window games shown, and I'd like to have seen some more RPGs. Other than that, the, the game lineup was pretty solid. Now to the hardware. I know this is already heavily divisive, but I really like the design of the console itself. The curves remind me of the boldness and design that Nintendo tried to achieve in the 90s with the Nintendo 64. In a time where gaming consoles were squares or rectangles, Nintendo added curves. Sony is doing the same thing here and I like it. However, I understand that it's definitely not for everyone. I also like that right out of the gate, Sony is including a digital and disc-based version of the console. I'm curious about whether there will be differences in the hardware beyond just the optical drive. As it stands, I will be getting the disc-based version as I'm not too keen on the future of gaming coming routinely with 100 plus gigabyte downloads. Even though the data comes off the disc, it is way faster to pull from there than it is to download, at least for me. Hopefully the digital version comes with a significant cost savings for those of you that want to get that instead. And that brings me to the biggest issue that is still unaddressed, the price. I have a theory that Sony and Microsoft are just playing a game of chicken at this point. Neither wants to come in as the more expensive option for this upcoming generation, so neither is willing to talk pricing yet. They do still have some time, but it just leaves this gaping hole in the presentation when they show you everything, but not the price. Well, or the release date. However, the release date is only a few months away and we can probably just go ahead and assume late October or early November for the holidays, so no release date isn't a big deal. If it comes to be that this thing costs $700, well, that indeed would be a big deal. Overall, I was relatively impressed with the reveal. The system looks good and the games for the coming years look pretty good as well, there's a lot of things to look forward to. We also already know that we'll be seeing Starfield and the next Elder Scrolls game on the PS5, so that's reason enough to go ahead and get one in my opinion. The only things lacking in the presentation were more launch titles, assuming that they have them, because if they don't, well, it makes sense why they didn't show them, the lack of RPGs, and of course, no price reveal. Other than that, I enjoyed the hour I spent watching it, and I am excited for the future of the PlayStation brand. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, maybe click that bell icon, and as always, thank you so much for watching.